I think a lot of people have been speaking about it recently. Um, it's been a topic of conversation within the electronic music space. Just because I think there's a lot of money involved. It seems like there's a lot of stakeholders involved in the running of the successful running of an event. So I guess there's a lot of things to look out for and everyone's trying to protect their nut. No one wants to be in a position where they're like calling something off and then suddenly it gets rectified a week later. So everyone's kind of like um, holding court and trying to make sure uh, nothing crazy happens. Let's see if I can find the update. There's an update thread that they posted. Yeah, this is the one, yeah, right? So everyone's trying to hold court and not be too um, nervy with it, right? Um, and I guess for me personally, it's been quite difficult to kind of like look at this stuff because it's like, in the electronic music space is sort of like equating like it's like, it's like that nasty post i posted the other day or i spoke about on my podcast the other day right when nasty made a dj nasty actually she made a post about you know um wanting her gigs in milan to go through because it's one of the best clubs she's been to and then sharing pictures of herself looking cute like you know it's quite me 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 it's quite self-absorbed it's very narcissistic um and just again, it just goes to highlight just how uh, lacking in empathy people are in general, right? People are just trying to look after themselves. No one really gives a shit about, you know, people across the world dying from this virus. People would just much rather be able to get to their destination on time. They want to be able to meet their friends. They want to be able to go to this festival, hang out at this place, whatever. There's no real, there's no real consideration for the other people involved in this who are being affected by it in a really, really um, bad way. Uh, but Resident Advisor did a really good job of kind of collating all the information so far in dance music world. I think that the something we've heard so far is that so far, I think Italy's locked down. Uh, Coachella's been postponed until October, it looks like. Um, and there may be a few other festivals coming up that will be affected too. I think most likely, most, more likely than not, if the coronavirus ends up uh, spreading across the UK, we end up getting the same amount of... Um, cases springing up as they did maybe in northern part of italy i assume things like junction which i intend to go to this summer will also be called off i'm assuming place things like houghton that was called off last year due to severe winds will definitely get called off again this year so all those things will just there'll be a a real lockdown in terms of uh these uh what do you call it these public events right because i think they're debating the same thing about sports too football they're saying they want to play a lot of the games behind closed doors which is insane really considering most of the clubs get their main amount of revenue through the gate on the match day so the fact that they're doing it behind closed doors is essentially going to hamstrung the, some of the clubs who aren't uh financially stable as others um it's going to mean that you know they're going to be put in a perilous position uh the games are not going to be good it's not great motivation for the players to be subjected to you know to be required to play a game um behind closed doors because of the virus going around but everyone else has to stay at home you know it's not the best mindset to put professional athletes in um you want to make their job as easy as it can right and then you've got that hanging over the head and in general i just think you know if italy has kind of postponed the league i think until the june or july until everything kind of calms down i think the premier league just have to just follow suit but again too many stakeholders involved who are have a you know big financial interest in these organizations or in these kind of things taking place and it just it's just going to show how you know deep the capitalist um kind of uh tentacles are attached to all these things that we know and love right um they're really showing their true colors here but anyway let's go into the resident advisor article it did a good job of kind of collecting all the information so far and it's very interesting to see like what's kind of what's currently going on and how they aim to kind of sort it out so this is from resident advisor i'll put up here on screen for you guys to see um it says here coronavirus latest um everything we know about the novel coronavirus aka covid19 is affecting the music right so we'll scroll down let's go from like the let's go from like the six right so I posted here so the six says here um a note posted on the south by southwest website on march 6th indicated the city of austin has cancelled the march date for south by southwest so south by southwest if you, any of you guys know most of you would know if you're watching this show that you know it's the premier place for launching a startup and launching a music career right people go there people from you know all walks of life have kind of gone there secured funding um secured investment um maybe got a mentor on uh, on board maybe have been able to kind of you know get a new fan base sign a record label there's so many things that have happened off the back of south by southwest it's like you know the number one cultural event to go to if you're up and coming so for them to cancel south by southwest is a big deal because i'm assuming there's a lot of big industries a lot of big uh, brands tied to it i'm assuming people like mastercard and visa and all that sort of shit 
are sponsoring that kind of event so for them to cancel it now is obviously a big blow but again it's a very good precaution measure so i think that was one of the big heavyweights to kind of uh, fall by the wayside due to the coronavirus and i think that was the one where everyone kind of took notice and thought okay maybe this thing is serious if they canceling south by southwest it means stuff like coachella for instance which is you know they're in talks about postponing it until i think was it october or something right they're going to be affected but the thing that's really interesting me about it is, is that the postponement it's not only going to affect them in the you know in the interim for now at the moment. It's also going to affect them in the future because even if you postpone Coachella until October, it's no guarantee people are actually going to come out for it, right? Um, a lot of the Coachella fans or a lot of fans that go to maybe not South by Southwest are probably a bit more of an older crowd, but I would imagine Coachella fans for the most part, uh, most of the attendees that go there are usually young kids, right? Young girls maybe under the age of like 25, maybe still living at home. For the most part, no parent would be confident or be comfortable allowing their child to go to a festival like that with this virus, you know, still in the air. They wouldn't want it. Of course, you know, the kids are going to do what they want to do. If they want to sneak out and go, if they want to defy their parents, they'll go regardless. But I think a lot of parents will have it, will try and try their best to this, uh, you know, uh, dissuade their kids from going to an event like this, especially, you know, a festival where, you know, it's not the most hygienic of places in the best of times, right? Let alone when this virus is spreading. Uh, so since the following here about South by Southwest, we're devastated to share this news with you. The show must go on is in our DNA. And this is the first time in 34 years that the March event will not take place. Jesus Christ. It reads adding in the festival honors and respects the city's decision. So again, it wasn't even the threat South by Southwest that decided to cancel it. It was actually the city of Austin that said, hey, this has to go off, which is, again, another sad indictment of just how short-sighted some of these event promoters are. Um, we continue here from March 9th update. Golden Voice, the promoter behind the Coachella Valley uh, Music and Art Festival, is in talks to move the massive two-weekend festival to October the 16th and 23rd, which, you know, if you're familiar with Coachella, I think they started this maybe a couple of years ago during the whole um, uh, double weekenders. Um, which I've never, I assume it's just a monetary thing, right? I'm assuming they just make so much money or they sell so many tickets the first weekend that they just, and the demand is so high. It's like the premier influencer, Instagram ready, TikTok ready platform to go to, especially if you're a young kid trying to get involved in that industry. And just in general, it's LA, it's glitzy, it's fun, it's cool. So maybe that's why they did it. But you don't really hear other festivals doing that, right? Where they have like a back-to-back -back festival following weekend. It's not really a thing that happens, which is, you know, pretty cool concept. But now they're aiming to push it back to October, which is, you know, not the same thing. But obviously, LA's got the the benefit of never being cold, really. Um, the weather's still going to be beautiful. The flights will probably be cheaper in October than it would be in April anyway going forward. People can plan it. There's still enough time to plan ahead. Um, your ticket will probably still be valid for the October day anyway as well. So there's loads of things in their favor in that regard. But again, I'm just not too sure what's going to happen with the attendees. Like Who's actually going to turn up? Who's going to be confident enough to go to an event like Coachella with this in the air. I don't know. Um, the, the, there are four active COVID, um, coronavirus cases in uh, Riverdale, uh, Riverside County, sorry, where the site festival is in is in IDO in, is located. Um, okay, as following news here, all of Italy will be placed under lockdown starting from March 10th, which is today as part of a decree by the Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti. Conditions already imposed on Northern Italy will be extended to the entire country. Um, some 60 million people, which includes pro uh, prohibition on all non-essential travel and the closure of nightclub venues, gyms and other gathering places. Jesus Christ. You just forget how how much of a social creature we are and stuff and this happens, isn't it? Every gathering place, essentially everywhere apart from your own home, is completely off off limits. I think there was a picture someone tweeted earlier on, you know, of like the streets of Italy being completely deserted. Um, yeah, it's a very, very um, crazy time. And then next year we've got Get Lost. 24-hour Miami party planned for March 21st has been postponed, of course. March 9th announcement says, a new location for the event that we've been working on for six months in based in the district of Hilai, Hilali, something, where city officials announced an, a ban on all public gatherings due to the fear of COVID-19 virus spreading. And then lastly here for the March 9th news, we've got the French government has banned events with more than 1,000 people from March 8th through to April 13th. Le Monde reports heightening its previous call to halt 5,000 capacity events. Concrete's brick called the express frustration with the move. Which, why would they have, let me just, why are they frustrated about this move? Just, just to hear what their opinion is on this one. Uh, brick Le Cree, huh? All 1,000 events are forbidden in France from now on. French scene, RIP. Uh, you can't really say that again. It's not, it is what it is, isn't it? 
it's not again it's not that it's not about the scene this is about humanity man there's people in like rural parts of china like dying left right and center right i think it's kind of like stalled a bit the death count but people are still dying from a virus that they had no idea existed a couple of months ago or just a few weeks ago it's not really about the scenery at this point in time it's about something bigger than that but you know i understand people's uh reluctance to look at it that way especially when you're got some money involved in it but hey uh next year we've got a berlin venue uh trauma bar in kino has cancelled all its upcoming events in march which is, again which i showed you but i said before when i was in when i went to Berkheim earlier i did say in my video about Berkheim that i did get the impression that it was a lot emptier than it had been previously like it did take long to go in like usually when i queue at like you know because the peak time to go to Berlin or to go to Bergen is usually Sunday morning, which is why they call it church. Sunday morning uh, between the hours of like let's say four a.m. and nine a.m. or four a.m. and eight a.m. That's the peak time to go in. It's usually no queue. You can stay there until the Monday morning. Um, but it was completely empty. No, I won't say completely empty, but the queue was a lot smaller than it had been previously. Uh, it didn't extend up until the Curry Works place, just probably just until the middle of it, until the middle of the kind of like the runway towards the club. Um, the club was fairly empty. There was a lot of room. You could dance around. I made my way all the way to the front of the decks, which I never did previously. It's always too packed to even walk to the front. I never even see what the booth looks like in Bergen because it's that so it's that packed. This time I could actually see what the booth looked like in both places. Panorama Bar maybe was a bit more fuller than uh, Bergheim, but that might be due to the lineup. Yeah, it did seem as if uh, Bergheim was a lot quieter than it had been in previous times I've been. But again, um, I'm not there every day. I'm not there every week. Maybe just an off week. I don't know. It continues here. Uh, winter music conference uh, will not take place in 2020 billboard reports following the cancellation of ultra music festival the postponement of guests of miami party and then lastly here lastly here we got uh, katrina barbary has cancelled her up and coming u.s tour as well of it is lockdown she was due to play five shows between march 18th and 28th including stops in dallas los angeles and new york but i'm assuming because italy is suffering what they can and she obviously lives in italy i'm assuming you know they're not allowing her to travel out and it's just not safe in it so again um, a very hectic time uh, a very crazy time again uh, sympathies do go out to a lot of the artists and stuff because i'm assuming as post human spoke about in his previous tweet i mentioned in the other podcast it does seem like the number one time to go the the main money earner for a lot of these acts is to go on tour um and perform at these festivals and stuff especially since festival seasons you know starting a lot sooner than it would have done in previous years but there must be bigger things out there than you know than the scene to worry about at the moment. You know I mean, people are dying left, right, and center. We need to kind of contain this virus, and hopefully, um, there's a solution or some sort of a vaccine gets found uh, during the interim, and then you know people can go back to their regular scheduled programming. But until then, let's uh, let's help each other.